Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise and worship has absolutely wrecked me. Uh, Y'all, you know what? He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy. And if you think about what that song is saying right there, what we just got through singing, man, oh, man, oh, man. You think about the places he was, where, where, where we were at, that he was right there with us and he took care of us when, when you know what, we were broken. We were, we were going through it, dealing with it. But you know what? He was right there. And he's worthy of our praise. Amen. Can somebody praise him like he deserves to be praised? Can somebody praise him? Today is Mother's Day. A day that we, we celebrate every year. And y'all, as Dalt just shared, uh, the, 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 you can't put in words. We can't really put it in words. You know what? What, what God gifted this earth with, with the mothers. Amen. And we're so proud of all, and we, we, we had carnations for each and every uh, mother out there. If you didn't get yours, we have carnations. But with all the mothers in the house, please stand up. <laughs> we're so grateful and thankful for each and every one of you and for, for this, you know what, the, God, God, had put something on my heart and shared. Actually, the message he brought us today had nothing to do, I thought, you know what, as far as with, with the, the Mother's Day part of it. And then he began to show me how he ties it in and, and brings it together. But I want to read a scripture now from Proverbs 31, begin at verse 27. God's word says, She watches over the ways of the household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm and deceitful, charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. To, to know, I heard something said this week and I, and I, and I just typed it in my phone because uh, it, it was something... That, that was such a statement made, and it said this. It said, never could it be estimated what a man owes to a godly mother. Never could it be estimated what a man owes to a godly mother. You know what? To know that, 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 that you know what, what God gifted with and what he, what he gave, first and foremost, as, as every mother is given a gift of a child. And then what, what, what God does with a godly mother to be able to train them up. You know, I, I've always said this. Fathers, daddies have, have a bond. But a mother has a special bond with a child because they have felt that child from the very beginning. They felt as they went through and went through the process of giving birth to that child. They have that special bond. And a child can be whatever, wherever, away. But you know what? You let something happen. That child skin its knee, let the child, something happen. Who's the first one they holler for? I want my mama. And I want you to know that if, you, if yours is here today, if you have your mother, you know what? Realize how blessed you are. If, if, you, if you're a mother here and you don't have your children with you today, don't worry. God's going to place them right back beside you. He's going to take care and do what needs to be done. Mothers are special, and that's why God has us to honor mothers on this day. And I want you to know that, that, that you know what, as Dalt shared a while ago, we can't put in the words, and it just as I just read, you know what, we can't estimate the value of what God's gifted with, with the mothers he put on this earth. So again, we want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Amen. <laughs> this message God put upon my heart, I had... The other night, as y'all know, Wednesday night, God kind of changed everything around and, and, and did what he did and talked to us about what he made us up with. And, and if you think about it, you know what, with, with, with the, uh, the mothers, how God used, you know what, what's this? Mary never, never even could imagine or think about what God had put inside of her, who God had put inside of her. And you, as mothers, could never think about the potential of the child that God put inside of you. And, and to, to, to realize, you know what, that, 
that, that as we talked about it the other night, the makeup, our makeup, what we're made up of. God said he made us in his image. And the makeup of what he put inside of us, he put, you know what, faith in us to, to move mountains. He put power in us over the, all the power of the enemy. He did things inside of us and made us up. And he, watch this, he used a very special person to carry us around. And he said he knew us before we were even in our mother's womb. The potential, you think about this, that, 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 that conception, that, that time of, 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 of being, you know what, pregnant or, or in maternity is, 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 you know what, we can't even fathom, mothers can't even fathom what God has done through them. And you look at the things that's happened on this earth and the people that God has used, and he used the mother to birth them. Even his own son. And you think about, you know what, what that is. And this message, as I said, God changed the other night. And so that this morning, with what God has spoken to my heart, I was thinking, you know, Lord, how does this connect? And he began to show me. And so we're going to talk about it. I had some, some, some conversations with some folks this week about, about this very message. And God confirmed these things. So let's pray. Father, we're so grateful, so thankful unto you for this wonderful day that you blessed us with. And the opportunity and time you've given us to come to be in your house, to be together. Thank you for these mothers, Father. All that are here, all those watching and listening all over the world. Thank you, Father, for, for the gift given of life through them, Father, that you, that you brought forth. And, Father, the gift you've given to this world, Father, through them, through these mothers. And we thank you for, for all that you have done, all that you do, and all that you're about to do through the mothers, Father. We thank you for this day and opportunity to receive your word. And we pray, Father, it be all of you. None of me, and let your word do exactly as you plan and purpose. And we love you, we thank you, we praise you, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And I forgot something. Nick. I almost forgot this, y'all. This week, coming up in this next, uh, uh, starting in this next, today, next week, and throughout, we got seniors that are being honored that graduate this, this, this coming up, you know what, on, on graduation night. And we have seniors here we got, I know we got at least one that's, that couldn't be with us this morning, but, but we've got uh, seniors, and, and we want to honor our seniors. We want to honor those that have made that commitment to go through. Amen. We want to honor those seniors. No. And you should have been in the back going like this right here, because I, while I was praying, I went, oh, my gosh, I about forgot. But we want to, I want to get, Nick is, is uh, our youth pastor, him and Mal, and I want to get them to come up, and, 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 and we want to present to any, first and foremost, I know we got a couple that's in the youth, and if we've got any other seniors here, that if you're a uh, family, that, that you can't make the youth, but you, you know what, you're a church family, and you, you are uh, here with, with even some of our students, if you're here, we want to honor any, any seniors. So uh, I know that, that we got, yeah, would y'all come and, and, and be able to present this and present these? Uh, I guess we want to have just any seniors to stand up. Seniors, would you stand up? Any seniors we have here? Okay. Grayson, what we're going to do, we're going to honor them in any way. Grayson and, and uh, uh, Austin, uh, that we know, uh, they're going to, they're just going to uh, share something. They have a bag for them. And so if you want to grab one of those mics. They have things that, that, that they got, and then, of course, they got things with the school they're doing so but this was a day that we was trying to get it to, together to be able to do that so just wanted to this thing is good okay just wanted to share about our guys they've been with us uh now in youth for for a couple years uh we're very blessed um i do know want to recognize the two guys that uh and grayson actually has to do a life life garden class this, this morning they just sprung it on him so he wasn't able to be here in austin as well but um Grayson has received a scholarship to play football at Lions College, so we're very blessed for that. And Austin received an academic scholarship. We're still uh, looking at where he's going, but he did. He scored uh, high enough on the ACT to receive an academic scholarship. And if there's any other seniors or any families here who have seniors, we'd like to uh, present them with something and, and it can be next week if you want to bring them or whatever. We just want to be able to give them a Bible to send them on their way in the next chapter of their life with the Word of God. We want to also give them a, a T-shirt representing Lighthouse Church. But the most important thing, and we're going to do that right now, 
is we want to pray over these guys. Yes. Pray over these young men and women, and not just from Lighthouse Church, but throughout throughout the country. That's that's a, a week away from stepping into the next chapter of their life. Whatever that is, wherever that you know, wherever God leads them, the most important thing is that us as a body of Christ want to pray over our seniors, that God guide them, lead them, direct them wherever they go, and that they always have a, a church to look back to to say, hey, we're here, we love you, you're part of our family, and um, we'll do anything we can. So can we pray real quick? Amen. Dear God, we come to you, God, we're grateful. We're grateful for these young men and these young women, Father God, who have accomplished something, Father God, that is, that is outstanding, God, is they're, they're, they're finishing up their high school career, God, and, and, the, and the next chapter of their life, God, you know the plan. And God, we know that your word says, for you know the plan you have for us, God, it's good. And God, to give us a future and I hope, God, to prosper us, not to harm us, Father God, we declare that over their lives. God, as they go forth into this next chapter of their life, God, some are going to college, some are going to the work field, God, some of them are going to the military. God, we pray that you protect them, keep them safe. God, we plead your blood of Jesus over them. God, I pray that you give them your guidance and your direction. You lead them, God, safely, God, and, and, and prosperously. God, you favor them wherever they go. And God, I pray that they find success. But God, most of all, God, I pray that wherever they go, they're a light. And God, your light and your fire shines through them. God, that you impact their life. God, you show yourself so evidently in their life, Father God. And everywhere they go, God, your light shines through them, God, on the others. And they further your kingdom, God. They be the ambassadors, the representatives you called them to be. And God, they go forth and they glorify you. They further your kingdom. God, we thank you. We give you praise and glory, God, for the wonderful report we're going to receive, God, of how you're using them. And God, how you're impacting their lives. And God, we're just grateful to be a part of it. Pray that you bless them, use them, protect them. And God, let us always be the men and women you made us to be, God. We trust you, love you, praise you, and thank you for everything. And God, to you all the glory for it all. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Can we give our seniors a hand? You know, next year we'll be honoring seniors at Hope Christian Academy. We've got one student that, that is already uh, committed to be enrolled, that will be a senior here. Devin is sitting up there. I told Devin, Devin, if you're the only senior, you get to be the valedictorian. <laughs> you get to be the, all them other Torians. And, and you're number one in your class <laughs> with all, everything. You get, he gets to be all of it, unless we have some more. And then, then you're going to have to really work hard. To, <laughs> but you know what? Starting August 3rd, we are first day of school, Hope Christian Academy. <laughs> we have new, new kids uh, being, being registered, applied every day. We're getting real close to 50, 50 students already. Amen. Amen. We got building out back, and God, he, he's never done anything in this ministry that he, he wasn't preparing us for what he was about to do. So I'm excited about uh, what's going to take place, and I ask you to continue to pray over the school. Amen. And as we, there'll be a time here where, where we'll have, uh, we'll be having uh, uh, a whole lot of things happening with our seniors that are coming here. That, that uh, you know what, that their Hope Christian Academy and being a part, you know what, learning about Jesus first and foremost. Amen. Open your Bibles with me to 1 Peter 5 and 7. First Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And first thing, before I go any further, God kind of tied this to, to Mother's Day with my mind of this, is how in the home, you know what, the mother, you know what, is that one that, that you know what, that's, that's always caring and, and working and, I mean, trying to, you know, keep everybody together, kind of doing the things that they do. So, so as, as, I was, as I was praying, you know, God just reminded me that, that, that you know what, that it kind of ties together with that. Nick and I were talking this week, and he was talking about some things that the Lord was dealing with him with. And, and when I say dealing with him, what I mean by that is revealing things to him, showing him things and teaching him. And Dustin and I got to having church the other night at, at, at the ballpark. We had church. How many knows you have church anywhere you at? You put Jesus in the middle of it. Amen. And we, were, we, were, we got to talking and sharing about some things. And, and, and I told him, I said, you know what, that's just confirmation of this message that God wanted us to have. And and, and, and I know Michelle was calling him, and, and they had some plans. And I said, look, 
All I know is just tell her we was having church. Just tell her you was at church. That's all, all I know to tell you because he, 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 was, he was trying, we was trying to, to, to say all we could say and so he could get out of there, but we didn't do too good with time, did we? <laughs> but, y'all, we were, we were talking about the things and, 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 and how many knows that God would allow things in our life to teach us? He allows things to happen. We were talking this morning about how, first and foremost, we know if we're serving God, he orders our steps, he directs our path. But it's still, at times, you know what, we'll get caught up in the moment. We'll get caught up with the things that are happening. But God allows things in our life. People have misquoted scripture for years and years and years. When, before I come to know the Lord, I heard people, I always heard people say this, God won't put more on you than you can bear. Never, nowhere in the Bible does it say that. Nowhere does it say it. And the only thing close to it, it says he won't allow more. You know what? The things to take place that, that he said he won't let, that he'll leave us a way out. And, and, and so because he, the thing is, God don't put bad things on people, on his people. He puts good things. He does good things. But he'll allow things. Watch this. Because we learn through those things. And I know this, he knows our heart. God's word says in 1 Kings 8 and 39 that God and God only knows the heart of every person. So he knows what we, what we you know what, no matter how we react, he knows what we will stand through. He said it wouldn't be, it wouldn't allow more than, than, than we, could, we could deal with or we could bear. So he allows things to teach us, to help us to grow in faith. God's word says that perseverance, you know what, grows us. You know what, those those. That, that, that when we persevere, when we push through something, it grows us in faith. We grow through those things. Y'all, I was talking to Pledge this week about this and how that we learn to trust God through, we, we learn to trust him through the things that we go through. Sometimes things will happen and we look at those things and we think, man, but, but if, as we stop and we look, we realize God is doing something in it. If we look for God, we'll see God, and we'll see him right in the middle of it, and we see that those things that we're going through is something that, that he's helping us with, that, you know what, that he's doing some things with it, but sometimes, how many knows we don't like to go through things? Amen. Y'all, we, we have, when we face things, when we deal with things, when we go through things, we have two options. We're given two options when we face things. We'll either trust or we'll doubt. Amen. There's no in-between, y'all. Think about what I'm saying. There's no in-between. There's no middle of the fence. We either trust or we doubt. And what's this, y'all? How many knows that God will meet us at times in our faith just to grow us in our faith? He'll meet us just to grow us in our faith. He allows but he always leaves that way out like his word says. And we grow through trials. We grow through trying times. And, and let me say this. The reason that we call it a trial is because it's something that we don't want to go through. Or it's something that, that we don't like dealing with, something that, that's not happening on our time. Hello? We call it a trial because it's something we don't like to face. Something that tries our faith. And then, when it tries our faith, we got those two options to choose from. We choose trust or we choose doubt. We have things in our life, y'all. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you won't have things to deal with. We have stuff. We have cares. And we can do two things with them. We can hold on to them or we can give them to God. We can hold them or we can let them go. And you know what, before somebody says, man, you know what, I've been dealing with this and I need this, this message is for me. No, it's for all of us. It's for every one of us. Amen. We all need it. Y'all, if we hold on to things, we try to fix them. Watch this, listen to me. If we try to work it out ourselves, they get worse. Can I get a witness? They get worse. You know what, if I try to make it happen, how many knows that my fixing never did work? It never, never has worked. I can't make it happen. I can't fix it. But you know what? The more I try to fix it, the worse I make it. The more that I try to put it together, the worse it gets. It's like trying to put a puzzle together and trying to fit pieces in the wrong places. 
Can I get a witness? And it makes it worse. Y'all, how many agree with me, with me that the imagination will run wild? It'll take you to places you don't want to go. Hello? It'll bring upon fears if you let it in. Amen? Watch this. We can take one little thing in our life and turn it into a movie. <laughs> Amen? We can turn it into a movie. Watch this. And then get to playing out the parts and adding new roles. <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> think about what I'm saying. You know what? Boy, watch this. The time we get through, it's become a horror. All of a sudden, you know what? Watch this. We play out these scenarios. And what? If you talk to anybody about it, they'll add parts for you. They'll tell you how bad it is. Some people, you know what? Some people will add to the movie and want to watch and want to play in it. You ever met somebody that you asked them, how you doing, and you wish you hadn't? <laughs> Amen. They're the ones that want to play in the movie. And you got something going on, you got something happening. What's this? If we let this thing right here get involved, it becomes a mess. Somebody with me? What's this? And we play out the parts. We add the scenes to them. Those could be's, might be's, may happens. Am I preaching to somebody? Yeah, I'm preaching to all of us. Amen. That's when the two options slide. That's when the two options come, and then you know what? That's when 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 the the, the, the second option slide, tries to slide in. Fear. Amen. Because fear brings doubt. Fear of is the root of all bondage. Fear of, what's this? Fear of, you think about what I'm saying. Fear of, fear of failure, fear of, of, of acceptance, fear of, you know what, fear of the unknown. That's why that imagination rises up. You know what, we don't know what's about to happen unless we trust God. And if we trust God, then we know what his word says, amen. But fear of is the root of all bondage. That's where bondage starts. That's what keeps one bound. That's why God tells us in his word to cast all these things upon him, for he cares for us. Cast upon him. God titled this message, Cast Your Cares. Cast your cares. Cast any problems, any situations. Cast stuff. Cast everything upon him. Watch this. Anything that comes in our life, we turn it over. That's what he's talking about doing. Anything that comes in our life, we, we turn it over. We give it up. But how many knows that we have a problem with that sometimes? He says, give it to him. Listen to me real close. Because he can handle it. How many knows he knows how? He sees the whole thing. He knows how to work it out. But, but sometimes we try to work it out. We try to figure it out. When God's already got it figured out. He's already got it worked out. What's this? We, we, we tend to, to stay in our situation a lot longer than we, we have to sometimes. We got to trust him. We got to put it in his hands. God's word says put it in his hands and trust him with him. But here's the key to putting it in his hands. This is what I want to talk about just a little bit today. We got to put it in his hands and leave it in his hands. Somebody hear me. We're good at putting it in there. We just have a problem with leaving it. We got to leave it there. That's the part that Nick and I were talking about this week. This is the part that we tend to struggle with at times. Letting it go. We carry it to God. We pray and ask him to take care of it. To take these things. And then we take them right back. Hello? We take them right back. We, we give them to him, and then we take them right back. We say that we let them go. And I'm going to give you an illustration. We'll go to our, our, our altar to pray, wherever it's right here, wherever, wherever you get before God's your altar. And we'll take it, 
We'll take it to our altar. We'll pray and we'll place them in God's hands. And as soon as we get up, we'll pick it up and take it right back with us where we're going. Amen. We want God to fix it, but we won't let go of it because we're trying to fix it. Am I preaching to somebody? Y'all, to understand that, that, that we, we have a tendency just to try to make it happen on our own. We place things in his hand only to say, God, I got this. I can handle this. Somebody's relating right now. Somebody might be even in the middle of this right now. And I love it when God does that. You know what? That, that, you know what? That, that, that you may be dealing with it right this moment. And you know what? God will, God will, he loves us so much that he's got an answer for us right in the middle of our situation. He's got an answer right in the middle of our struggle if we listen. God had given Nick a revelation, y'all. And I related to it because I love the fish. I love fishing and, and I, I enjoy fishing. That's my, uh, that's my thing of just getting out somewhere. I love getting out there and seeing what God has created. I love getting out there and just seeing the, the nature. And, and you know what? I, 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 I enjoy it. And, and, and I understand. I've come to learn and understand why they call it fishing instead of catching. Amen. Because you ain't always catching. There's a whole lot of fishing going on. Amen. Now, we can relate to that as, as, as you know what, in our walk as Christians, because you know what, fishing, that's what Peter and them was doing. They said they hadn't caught nothing. Ain't nothing happening. Wasn't nothing happening. How I many know sometimes we'll be fishing for something, but ain't nothing happening. So we started making it on our own. We started, we start trying to take it on our own and try to do it. Amen. And so we were talking about this, and, 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 and I got to relating to it. His word here says, cast our cares. Casting, the word casting means the act of throwing something forcefully. Watch this, getting rid of it. Throwing it forcefully. In the Greek, it says to eject it. It says to bring forth, to drive out, to expel, to leave to pluck, to thrust out, to send away. In other words, what he's saying is to let it go, to get rid of it. Think about it. It says to eject it, to drive it out, to expel it, to, to, to thrust it out, to send it away. That's not, that don't mean, it didn't say pick it up and get it back. It said get rid of it. Somebody with me? To give it up, to let it go. Let me tell you about the revelation that we talked about. Like I said, I love the fish, and, and the word cast is related to fishing. If you read in God's word, it talks about them casting the nets. It talks about casting and different things. And, and what's this? As, 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 as fishermen, I love the fish. And when I go out fish, you know what? You got a bait on the hook, and you cast it. We cast it out there in order to, to, to get something. But what do we do? Bring it right back. People wonder why they go through things and they deal with things so much. Watch this. We're cast. Here it is, God. Somebody seen this with me? I'm going to give it to you, God. Amen. And so, you know what? I can relate to what, what, what it's saying because he didn't say cast it and reel it back. He said cast it. Cast all your cares upon me. Somebody's thinking. Somebody's doing that oh yeah thing. I cast it out there. I've given it to God. But I really reeled it back. Took it on myself. Trying to make it happen myself. Watch this. I thought about mothers and I thought about their children. And they deal with stuff with kids and all that. And they try to fix it themselves, try to take it on themselves when they can't. To be able to be, to be that one, to, to, to be that strong one to say, you know what, I've got to place this in God's hand. And to teach that, that it rolls down. Y'all, we want to keep taking it back. We want to keep holding on trying to figure it out, trying to fix ourselves, make something happen. What's this? 
especially when we don't get immediate results. Hello? When, when things, you know what, I was sharing, I was talking with, with, with uh, Nick and him in there this morning. We was talking about a, a thing, a situation. And I said, you know what, we, God actually spoke to him this week. I told him, I said, God will give you the answer to something, but something you're going to face and you'll deal with as, as he dealt with it yesterday. God had already given the answer and, and some things with that. And, and y'all, the bottom line is, is we know that God takes care of us. If we love the Lord and we serve the Lord, he's going to take care of us. He's going to be there. And he's got it. He knows how to handle it. He knows how to take care of it. That's why his word says in, in, in Matthew 6 and 25, don't worry. Why worry? He said, what's worry going to do except make you look rough? I, I did good, and I said that other word. Turn your face ugly. He said, what has worry done? What, what has worry, how has worry changed you in any way? What's it done to your situation? It don't. Worry can't fix it. The only thing to do, worry will make you sick. Worry will cause ulcers. Worry will cause, you know what, things. He said, don't worry. He said, if God fed the birds and he dressed the lilies, what more would he do for his children? What more would he do for us? So to, to, to realize that, 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 you know what, he, he, he wants us to cast the cares because he's got us. But, but how many knows that, that if it, we don't see immediate results, if it don't happen on our time, if it don't happen quick enough, I saw it, I got this. And I never have had it, and I never will have it. Amen. We do that movie up in our mind, then we start singing that old temptation song. It was just my imagination <laughs> running away with me. Amen. Because watch this. This thing I told y'all, you can get to thinking up scenarios of things that's going to happen with all those situations. And you know what? God's already got it. He already takes care of it. But you don't have played out in your mind until you don't just, you know what, about put yourself in a, in a place where you don't, don't, you don't close the door down, shut the doors, hide from everything. Because we reeled it back. Y'all, he said, cast my cares. Not keep them on the line. Hello? He said, cast my cares. Let them go. Let it go. There's people sitting here right now. There's people watching. Listen, you got things that you've been dealing with. Something's been going on. And you've been seeking an answer. And you've been trying to figure it out. God said, let it go. I got it. God said, let it go. I got it. I got it. I'll take care of it. I got it. You had some decisions in your life. You've had some things that, you know what, you know what you felt in your heart. You know what you felt like God was saying. But yet, you know what, you've tried to fix it. You've tried to work it out. You're trying to make it happen. He said, let it go. I got it. Let it go. I got it. He said, I'll take care of it. You've had some things going on. You've had some things with your children. You've had some things with your health. You've had some things. He said, let it go. I got it. Let it go. I can handle it. I'll take care of it. But I can't fix it till you give it to me. Look, if, if, if the appliance is broke, you know what? Until you get it to the appliance store, it ain't getting fixed. And you don't take, what's this? You don't take the appliance to the tire store. Did somebody hear me? You're going to all the wrong places, all the wrong faces, trying to get it fixed. Only God can fix it. He said, cast it upon him. Give it to him. But we'll try to make it happen with somebody else or something else. He said, cast your cares. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows the, the, the things that you're battling with. He knows the situation. He knows the problem. He knows the decisions. He knows everything. And he said, you know what? I got it. And if we believe he orders our steps and directs our path, then he knows exactly what to do and how to do it, when to do it, and where to do it. Cast our cares and quit pulling them back. Put them in his hands and trust him. Watch this. Knowing that he can, listen to me, but I can't. Without him, I can't do anything. With him, all things are possible. We never could, y'all. But he always can, he always will, and he always does. He always, look, there's not a person sitting here, a person watching this, can say that he's ever failed you because he hasn't. He never has. He never will, y'all. 
He never has and he never will. Y'all, the, the key to that is if we let him. If we let him. You see, we've been, our nature is, is you know what, watch this, like I've told you before. Oh, that's not that big. I'll, I'll handle that. Until it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and drives us to our knees. And we say, God, help me. He said, I've been trying, but you've been trying to tote it yourself. You've been trying to get it yourself. You've been trying to make this happen yourself. You've been trying to work this out. You know what? If we could learn to give him everything in our life, if we could learn to let go of everything and just say, God, this is not mine. This is yours. This problem's not mine. It's yours. This situation's not mine. It's yours. You know what? This, this decision's not mine. It's yours. This thing is not mine. It's yours. That child is yours. You've gifted me. Yes, you've blessed me with, Lord, I need you. You know what? I, I'm casting. I'm casting, Lord. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm casting. Y'all, he cares. He don't want us carrying around burdens. He don't want us toting stuff on. He don't want us weighted down with unnecessary stuff. He don't want us weighted down with excess baggage. He don't want us, you know what? He, what he wants us to do is to let it go. Look, you can be toting something and somebody big and stronger than you can come up and say, hey, let me get that. I got it. There's a, <laughs> there's a commercial that's, that's going on right now, and I wish I just got it and put it on this this. And this guy, he's got like five or six bags of groceries trying to tote them out to his car. And, 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 and the, the, the uh, guy was out there that worked at the grocery store. He's getting the buggy. He said, you need some help? No, I got it. And then papers are flying out of the coffee machine. And he's got, I got this, y'all. Somebody bigger and stronger than you and me is calling and saying, I want to get this for you. But you know what? We're saying, I got it. He's bigger, he's stronger, and you know what? He's wiser, and he knows. He knows. So we got to quit telling him we got it. Amen? He knows how to handle anything that we'll ever face, y'all. He's bigger than anything we'll ever face. I got the bracelets. I meant to bring them out here, to put them out here. God is bigger. God is bigger. Y'all, he's bigger than anything that you and I will ever face. I don't care what the, 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 the you know what? The report is, I don't care what the diagnosis is, I don't care what nobody else says, God is bigger than that. God is bigger. He's bigger than anything you and I will ever face. You know what, no matter how bad it sounds, God is bigger. He's bigger. And he knows how to make it good. Watch this. The bigger the problem, the bigger you see our God. Amen. The bigger you see him come through. Y'all, he just wants us to trust him. He just wants us to put it in his hands. You think about a, a young child and how a young child grows to trust daddy, mama. You know what? You can take a young child and put him up on a counter and tell him, fall backwards. And you, you tell him, I got you. And they'll just do it. Here they go. Watch this, because they got no reason not to trust. That only happens when they get around grown-ups so long. A young child will trust because, you know what, of the innocence that's in them, a young child will trust because they have no reason not to. And God's trying to bring us back to that, that, that mindset, you know what, as, as, as those children, as, as his word teaches, you know what, that we'll say, God, you know what, I don't know how you're going to work it out, I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm letting go. I trust you, Lord. I trust you. I can't see it, but I don't have to, Lord, because I trust you. I'm letting it go, Lord. I'm letting it go. Just as that young child, you know what, you know, Lord, I'm on this counter and I'm fixing, to, I'm fixing to jump. What's this? You took me and you as grown-ups and threw us up in the air, we'd be in a panic. You throw a child, they laugh. Because they trust. 
because they trust. Amen. If you could pick me up and throw me, I'd, I'd be even thinking you done done something. <laughs> you get all this up in there. Amen. Y'all, he wants us to put those things in his hands. But listen to me real close. Listen real, real close. He wants us to put them there and leave them there. Every situation, every circumstance, God's already got it. It's already worked out. It's already took care of. You know what? We'll stay in that place. We'll waller in that place that, that we shouldn't be in for a while. And he said, no matter what, I know the outcome. I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to take place because you love me. So I'm going to work it together for good so you can either stay there or you can come out by trusting me. Because he's going to bring it together for good. Because we love him. Amen. So drop the reel. Drop the reel. Tell your neighbor, say, we got to let it go. We got to let God. Got to let God have it. Amen. Y'all, we have our moments. But how many knows that we can't stay in our moments? Our moments can't become our days. Amen. We have our moments and something arises, but we can't stay there. We got to cast. We got to cast. He's wanting us to fulfill his word. He's wanting us to fulfill what he's told us to do. He's wanting us, what's this? Obedience is what God blesses. So when he says, cast your cares, is that not giving us a command? Is that not telling us something to do? And then when we do what he says do, he blesses the obedience. He blesses the obedience of doing what he's told us to do. He's wanting us to fulfill the word, his word in our situation. He's waiting. Some people say, well, I'm waiting on God to fix my situation. No, he's waiting on me to give it to him. To really give it to him and let it go. He's waiting on me to place it, them, whatever, in his hands. And leave it there. Casting. Casting is trusting, y'all. Casting is trusting. Y'all, I believe that every time I cast, that something's going to happen. I believe that. Sometimes I'll play that movie out in my eyes, in my mind. I'll see a fish with a mouth that big coming up and grabbing it. I believe. I believe that something's going to happen. I believe that I'm going to get something good out of my cast. Amen. Oh, somebody grab a hold of that right quick. I believe I'm going to get something good out of my cast. What's this, y'all? Believing causes things to happen. Y'all, he knows how to work all things together for our good. We just got to cast them on him. We got to cast them to him. We got to, to believe and know that, that, you know what, that he knows how to handle it. He knows how to take care of it. He knows how to fix it. We just got to trust him with it. Casting our cares on him. He knows what everybody here, everybody watching this, he knows what you're dealing with. How I many knows that, that everybody here has little things that we deal with that you might not even told nobody else? And there's folks here that believe in it. You know what? God's speaking to me right now. And let me say this to you. We can say we cast. But then we grab them. What we got to do, it's okay to go to God and say, God, help me let it go. God, help me to cast it and leave it alone. Help me to cast and quit reeling it back. I need your help. And y'all, if we walk in a personal relationship with him, then his word tells us, you know what? That, that he, what, what he wants to do. He says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we ask or think of according to the power, the believing power that works within us. And that personal relationship starts by believing. Starts by believing that he gave his life for us on the cross for our sins. And, he, and you know what? He rose again. And, and believing, you know what? That, 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 that you know what? He's alive to hear our prayers and answer our prayers. He's alive for us to cast our cares on. He's alive. Believing and professing him. 
Y'all, when you walk in that person relationship, when you walk in that true relationship with him, you have a confidence when you cast him. You see, if I'm not walking with him, if I'm just talking to talk, not walking to walk, you know what? I kind of, I, I can, I go, I might pray, but then I think, I hope he'll do it. I maybe will since I, but you know what? If I'm walking in a true relationship with him, and I'm walking with him and him with me, praise God, I have a confidence to know that when I cast it, he's going to take it. Amen. <laughs> so would you bow your heads and close your eyes? You see, confidence comes from that, that part of walking with him and that personal relationship with him. As I said earlier, 1 Kings 8 and 39, it says God and God only knows the heart of every person. I'm going to just say it like this. Hear and watch it and listen. God and God only knows your heart. He knows where you stand. And this has got nothing to do with you, you know what, getting into religion or you getting into, you know what, say it. This is about, what, you know what, life. This is about having a life and having, having life abundant, more abundantly. It's about having, you know what, about you and having peace, having the love, the joy. Most, first and foremost, having eternal life with him. So as God is, 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 is ministering to, touching hearts, reaching, those here, those watching and listening. If you say, you know what, I want to know, I want to have that personal relationship. I want to be able, I'm tired, tired of trying to fight these things, handle these things, take care of these things. I want, I want to walk in that personal relationship. If that's you, you know what, would you, would you step out and say, hey, you know what, instead of, instead of waiting on somebody else or instead of letting pride hold you back, would you, would you make a step of faith and say, you know what, I want, I want that, that, that eternal life. I want that peace, that love, that joy in my life. I want that. I'm ready for it. I'm ready, you know what, to give it all to him. I'm ready to surrender it all to him. I'm ready to let it go. If that's you, if he's speaking to you, and you're still fighting it, battling it, trying to hold off, pride's got you held up, and then you maybe you're saying, but what if? You know what, he wants to take all the what ifs. And some say, you know what, but, but, but what, if, you know what, what, what if I can't live it? What if I can't do it? What if I can't, you know what, his word says, come as you are. Come as you are. He wants you to be in a relationship, not a religion. He wants you to have a personal relationship. To be able to come and to, to, to know him personally. And to know that you'll not go through nothing and he won't be right there with you. I get some folks to come and pray. To know that he'll be right there with you in everything that you do, everything that you face. If you don't know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, if you don't know him, if you're not walking in a personal relationship with him, you're here, you're watching, listen. If that's what you want, you gotta, you gotta do it from your heart, not just your lips. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for I believe that you died on that cross. You gave your life for my sin that I could be free. And I believe that on that third day, you were raised out of that tomb. You're alive and well at God's right hand. I ask forgiveness of all sin in my life. Today, Jesus, I believe that my heart has been washed clean with your precious blood that you shed upon that cross. I profess you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Today, I believe, I profess that I am forgiven, I am saved, and I thank you for it. 
And I ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. We're so glad that you joined us in service today. And we pray that God moved in your life in a, in a very special way. We pray that, that you enjoyed it and, and, and that, that God just touched your heart. And today, we want to make sure we don't ever leave a service without giving opportunity for everybody to make the greatest decision that you could ever make in your life. God's Word says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, and His Word teaches us that if we believe He is who He says He is and He did what He said He would do, that, that if we believe that He died on the cross for our sins, that if God our Father raised Him up from the dead and we profess Him as Lord and Savior of our life, that we could be saved. And today, praying, if you haven't made that decision, God and God only knows the heart of every person. 1 Kings 8 and 39, you know your heart, God knows your heart. If you haven't made that decision, I pray that you make that decision. And, and even to think about it, what do you have to lose? Today, you didn't tune in by chance or coincidence. You didn't tune in, you know what, by chance happening, you're here by divine appointment. So if you haven't made that decision, I pray that you make that decision today. And if you do, we want to hear from you. We want to know what took place in your life. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a number, the app, the website, that you can reach out to us and let us know what's happening. And if you got prayer requests, if you're watching and you got prayer requests, we got people praying all the time. Let us know. Send your request to us, and we promise you, we're going to, to, to put it before folks, and we're going to put it before God. And if you get those answers, you know what? Let us know. Let us know what's happening with you. And if you want to come at any time, we'd love to have you to be a part. You're a part of our church family right now. We'd love to have you. If you want to come here, we'd love to see you. I want to thank you again for, for joining us today. And thank you for, for just being with us and know that, that, you know what? God's got you. He loves you and so do we. You have a blessed day. And know that, that you know what? This day is the day the Lord's made so rejoice and be glad in it. We love you. Have a blessed day.